So we're gonna do a PC build today, but not not like a, a PC build like I've done in the past. I haven't bought any parts or I don't have any components that are already sitting around and configured for this new build. It's gonna be more of a hodgepodge type of deal. We're gonna look around my office here, back in the back there behind the mystery door. I have some old stuff that's just kind of been around since old builds, old videos. We're gonna to try to put together a functioning system with it. And the idea behind this PC build is that I have a friend who reached out to me not too long ago and asked if I would help him put together a system for grad school. He's going back to grad school, he needs something to do his work on, he's like a workstation. And he'd also like to get back into gaming. He hasn't built a PC in quite a while. I think he told me the last PC he built had a 2500K in it. One of those guys, I also had a 2500K, very good CPU, but it's been a while since he put together a system. He was asking my recommendations on what I would buy if I was gonna do this. And I said, yeah, sure, what's, uh, what's your budget? And he said $600, which is, which is a little tight. You could build a system, you could build a workstation for 600 bucks, but if you want to do gaming, it gets a little tougher, especially with the prices of GPUs now, that 600 bucks can be eaten up pretty quickly just in a graphics card. So I said, I got a better idea. I think I have enough old equipment around here, some pieces and parts that I could probably put together a system that will be functional as a workstation for grad school, and then also be able to do some light gaming. And then you can take that 600 bucks, you can save it, and then when you're ready to do an upgraded PC, you'll know then if you want to get more into PC gaming or if you just want a better workstation, that 600 bucks can go into your budget for your upgrade PC and you get a better PC. So that's what we're gonna to try to do. I don't, have, I don't have a lot of PC parts and, not all, and they're not gonna be new stuff, but I think it's gonna work. The first thing I need to figure out is what's gonna be our motherboard CPU situation. I have two options. I think I know which one I'm gonna go with as long as it's back there. I think I think the CPU is what I think it is, but the first one is, of course, you've seen this one many times in the past. Oh my God, the dog hair. It's been down there a while. This is a 7700K. I don't even know what the, this, the motherboard is, but it's whatever works for that CPU. And I've had this for a long time. This was like one of the first builds I did before I even started YouTube. It works, we use it for the fan showdown, but it is pretty old. I think I have something better in the back, something a little cleaner maybe too. So. That's option one. I'll put that back down. And I'm gonna go back behind the mystery door where there is chaos. This one's more promising. It's almost put together. So this is left over from an old build I did quite a while ago, a few years ago maybe. It's a X570 motherboard, and I believe a 3700X, which is a much better, much newer, system than that 7700k and I, the one I think I'm gonna go with. We're gonna get rid of this air cooler. This is a stock air cooler I painted. Not that cool. I'm gonna probably go with a, an air cooler just to make it simple and easy to deal with. In the case, white, white cases are cool but they're very specific. If you want a white case, you have a white theme you're going for and um, I think for this guy we're gonna go with black. I see that there's no RAM here which I didn't remember. I probably used it somewhere else but we'll worry about that in a minute. So I've harvested all the parts out of the old PC, including the power supply, and we're off to a pretty good start. We got almost everything we need. If you only knew. What? Missing RAM, there is storage here. I don't know how much. The CPU, like I said, I think it's a 3700X. I'm gonna use these cable extensions because why not? And while I was back to looking for an air cooler, I decided why not go with this 360 millimeter AIO. Reason being that even though this is a temporary PC or just something to get them by for now, if I put something like this on there, that's just one less thing that he's got to buy in the future if he decides to go super ham on his next PC build. This will be hopefully enough to cool it, whereas an air cooler might not be. Power supply, it is 750 watts, which should be enough for this. RAM, I think I'm just gonna have to steal a couple sticks from my, uh, from my, from my little test bench down here. There's I think those are eight gig sticks, so I'll just take two of them. 16 gigs should be just enough. I don't know what speed they are, but I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll work, right? Uh, Try it in Z, so at least we'll get some, get some RGB action. Let's check out the CPU and see if it is what I think it is. And of course it's stuck to the, stuck to the cooler. Oh my God, oh, it's welded on there. Oh no, so good news. This is a 3700X, I was correct in my recollection, but when the cooler stuck to it, when I pulled it out of the uh, socket, we bent some pins over. So it might not be usable. We, we're, I'm gonna try to straighten them out, but 
dang. That's like the, the one thing I hate about AMD CPUs is that I have them stick to coolers more times than not when I try to remove a cooler. This is the one time I've ever had it bend pins, but ugh, not a fan. I do like how Intel CPU socket holds the CPU down. I've also had problems with those in the past. We all know that. But let's see if we can uh, make this better. Gonna be honest, don't have a good feeling about this, but I gotta give it a shot. Whoa. Whew. There's just two pins. Sweating over here. Nothing's broken off yet, so that's always a plus. I just jinxed it. Oh, that one's really bent over. I think we're gonna stop there. I think I got them somewhat straight. Hopefully straight enough that the socket can guide them where they need to go. Guess we'll wait and see. Well, I didn't like that. We're off to a we're off to a smash and start on this build. I like I said, I think I got them straight enough that they're gonna be able to find their home in this motherboard. Let's put them back in this thing before another tragedy falls us. Where's our triangle? We only get one shot, I imagine. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I'm doing it really, really well. Ooh. That is not how a CPU is supposed to sound when it finds its way into the socket. I'm afraid to pull it out. <laughs> to see if the pins just broke off. We gotta do it, we gotta know. You know what, no we don't. We're just gonna say everything's great, and when we boot it up, we're gonna have no problems. Cause that's how PC builds work. You just smash stuff into sockets and nothing ever goes wrong. I couldn't resist. <laughs> but all the pins are straight, so. If we can do it again, we're leaving it. Oh yeah, problem solved. I wasn't even worried at all. Okay, now where were we? We look like we're okay here now, after that debacle. I don't see any other damage to this thing. It has been sitting for quite a while. So before we go any farther, <laughs> I think it's more than appropriate we uh, try to start this thing to see if it functions anymore. Because there's a good chance it, it, it might not. So we gotta figure out what graphics card we're gonna use. I only have two options. I think it's pretty obvious which one we're gonna go with. Uh, I have my old 1080 Ti. Uh, as you can see, I've messed around with this quite a bit over the years. This is the card that I, that I broke at one point and then put in the oven and baked it and it came back to life. It still works. Um, but I think I'm going to use this one. This is a 5700 XT, I do believe. Yes, yes it is. Uh, slightly better, slightly newer. I think this will be a better choice overall. But let's just pop her in here and see if we can't get something to show up on our monitor here. Oh boy. Oh, fans are moving. No signal detected. Oh, we got something. Oh, we, we had an error. It said something. I didn't see what it was. It flashed by pretty quick. I think it was a memory error of some sort. Not good. Okay, I think it said something about a RAM error. I need a, I need a keyboard. Well, there's a RAM problem. We, we don't see one. So hopefully I can just reseat that. I do have a couple more sticks to try out. But AMD Ryzen 7 3700X, eight core, everything, everything's looking good. So we dodged a bullet on that one for sure. I couldn't, I can't believe that I was able to get those straightened up enough to get it to work. <laughs> so let's kill the power. Reseat this stick of RAM. Hey. Okay, I didn't say timing issue, so. Oh, nope, there it is, timing issue. No, where's the delete button? Socket zero, channel zero, dim one. I'm out. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. That could also be a pin issue. Maybe that's the pin that uh, talks to that channel. We, we could have a problem there. So that's a bummer. Let's swap these two. We know one, this one over here works. This one that says it doesn't. Let's swap sides and see if the uh, problem follows the stick or it sticks with the, with the slot. It's still B2 slot that's uh, it's giving us issues. Now, ideally we want A2, B2 for dual channel, but we're gonna swap it now to A1, B1 and see what we, see what we got there. Come on! 
on A1B1. Row row. So I don't see either one of the B channels. Oh, I'm fine. It's just that life is pointless and nothing matters and I'm always tired. Now I could pull the CPU out and try to re-socket it and see if that helps, but it also could just make it worse. Honestly, they don't look that bad to the naked eye, so maybe I just, maybe I'll just get lucky this time. Come on, baby. Be better. Bummer, 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 bummer. What can we do? What can we do? Hmm. Good news for my buddy Dustin. I remembered that I upgraded that PC a while ago. I replaced the 3950X with the 5950X. And then I remembered the 3950X is still in the 5950X box. So as long as this motherboard is not actually the thing that's broken, uh, he's gonna get a 16 core processor. But hey, there we go. We got a Ryzen 9 now, 3950X, 16 core. Total memory, 16 gigs, so both A2 and V2 are showing up. So yeah, this, uh, the 3700 is dead, which is, is a real bummer. And the problem is I should know better. I have had that happen to me so many times where I try to take a cooler off of, of an AMD processor and then the thermal paste just sticks to it and it's six, uh, sucks the processor up with it. This time ever, I was, I kind of bent it over a little bit, which caused those pins to be bent up. And even though I straighten them up to the best of my ability, they don't look that bad. Yeah, for some reason, the CPU can no longer talk to the B channel of the RAM sockets, which is a bummer. I might as well just throw in the other eight gigs, so give them 32 gigs total, because honestly, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use this, and it's just gonna sit down there unused, which is a waste, so I'm gonna throw in the other eight gigs, so we have a 3950X, six, or 32 gigs of RAM, and a 5700 XT, which isn't bad. This is, this is turning out to be a pretty good, a pretty good little setup. Upgrade the uh, graphics card, you got yourself a beast gaming PC, and with a 16 processor, 16 core processor, you got a decent, not even decent, you got a good workstation. So let me clean all this up, grab the case, and we'll start putting this bad boy together now, because we done fixed our problem that we created. Wow, build complete. What do you what do you think? I personally think it turned out a lot better than I had visualized in my head when he initially reached out asking about PC parts. It's still sad that the 3700X had to die because of my uh, incompetence, but the silver lining there is because that CPU pooped out or I killed it. You know goddamn well what happened. Whatever, whatever you want to say. It reminded me that I had a 3950X back there, which means in the end, Dustin gets a better PC, especially for workstation type stuff. And CAD, 16 cores is definitely the way to go for that for that stuff. The graphics card, the 5700 XT, it's not the best anymore, but it will do just fine for light gaming. And the case that I put it in, the DF700 Flux from uh, Antec, I chose this one because it's black and it'll blend in with whatever setup he's got going on. Also, I have the box for it, so that'll make it easy, easier for me to ship it to him without breaking anything but it's got extra space in it. So if he decides that he wants a better gaming PC, the first thing to do is upgrade that graphics card. And because of the, it's got a little more space in this case, it should be able to fit all those 45 foot long thick boy GPUs that exist in the world today. So I'm happy with it. And I think you will be too. But before I tear it all down and reset it to factory defaults, I'm going to run a quick Cinebench to make sure the temperatures are good and make sure there's good contact between the AO and the CPU. And then if that passes, I'll run some quick games on it just to make sure the graphics card is behaving, make sure the drivers are updated. So idle temps look good, 31-ish degrees. GPU looks good, idle 50-ish degrees. We'll run a quick Cinebench multi-core test, see what they level out at. Looks like our peak speed's right around 3,900. All core temperatures around 53, so we're actually looking really good. So I ran through a couple loops, everything looks fine. Temperatures are right, right around 53. Uh, ended with a 22,907, so looking good, looking good, looking good. Let's see how Overwatch looks, and that'll be, that's be all we need to see. That's pretty light gaming, right? Looking pretty good. GPU's at 60, 63 degrees C. We're easily able to hit the, uh, the frame cap of 60 FPS on max settings. This, this monitor is only a 60 hertz monitor, and I am only running on HDMI right now, so that's just fine, just for, just to make sure everything's working. I don't see any 
weird artifacts or anything like that. So I think this is good to go. We are, we got ourselves a working system. Oh, it's getting a little toasty on this uh, exhaust side of this thing, but looks like everything's functioning as expected. Temperatures are good. Performance in game is what I'd expect from uh, this type of setup. And I think Dustin will be happy with it. So now I'm gonna wipe it back to factory de defaults. I'm gonna set up windows. So it's a nice clean slate for him to use when he gets it. And thank you guys all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little build video, even though every time I do a build on this channel, nothing ever goes smoothly. I always mess something up somehow, some way. So maybe that adds to the joy, but thank you. Thanks again for watching. I hope you uh, stick around. I hope you get subscribed and I hope to see you next time. Peace.